Well, welcome back, Wealth Giants, to another episode. My name is Ryan. Welcome to the channel. And in today's episode, we're going over the balance sheet, how to read through them, understand them, learn the key definitions, and most importantly, get through them as fast as possible so you don't waste too much time on a single company. You can get through as many as you can without wasting too much time. Now, this is a three-part series. This is number two of three. And the first one I did was the income statement. I'll leave a tag up here as well as a link in the description below. I also provide a cheat sheet for each of these particular statements. So in my last video, I provided a cheat sheet for the income statement. This video has a cheat sheet for the balance sheet. This cheat sheet pretty much has the keywords that you are looking for in the balance sheet as well as their definitions and some equations that could help you kind of get through them and determine whether or not it's a good balance sheet or a good statement respectively. Anyways, uh, if you find value in this video, by the way, please consider tapping the like button, turn it blue like a Smurf. And also on top of that, uh, if you're new and you want to learn more, please consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump in this. But fair warning, these are things that I personally look for. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, these are just things that I look for in a balance sheet and things that I think that could help you as somebody who is going through balance sheets as well. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the computer and I will meet you there. All right, so welcome to the balance sheet cheat sheet that I made for you guys. So it's divided up into three different categories. The first category is the asset category. Second category is the liabilities category. And the third asset is the shareholders equity category. Okay, each category has a subcategory of current asset, long-term asset, current liability, long-term liability. You also have the total asset and total liabilities, and then the retained earnings and total shareholder equity. Right here in the second column, you have the different words that you are looking for on the balance sheet or similar words to it. Each of these in between the two yellow arrows are the main definitions that you are looking for in current asset. And then these ones are the long-term asset. These ones are the current liability. And these ones are the long-term liability. And then the definitions for them are over here on this side of the page. Down here we also have our calculations and we're gonna go through this at the same time we go through the balance sheet. Now for the balance sheet, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over Apple's balance sheet. We're gonna do that on Yahoo Finance. Now, if you're not sure how to get here, you're unfamiliar with Yahoo Finance, we're gonna go down to the financials. You click on that, you're gonna end up on the income statement. Now, if you wanna learn about the income statement, check out my last video, it's in the description below. But what we're gonna look at today is the balance sheet. You can also select between quarterly and annually, but we're gonna stick with annually in this video. Also, all numbers are in thousands, so keep that in mind as you're looking at all these numbers. This isn't 323,888,000. This is 323,888,000,000. And all the numbers below it are the same correspondingly. The main things that we're gonna look at, as we saw on the balance sheet cheat sheet I made for you guys, is the total assets, current assets and total non-current assets, total liabilities, current liabilities and non-current liabilities, and then the shareholders equity, which we will focus on specific things within it. Anything below these three different categories, don't pay much attention to them right now. And the reason why I say right now is because they aren't that important when you are trying to briefly run through everything just to see if you are interested in the company. Don't invest too much time in a company that you don't even know you're actually gonna buy into. If you think that you are gonna buy into it because you've gone through everything and you like what you see so far, then pay attention to this. But if not, just pay attention to these. And even then, these ones down here, you could probably find in statistics, which it'll just have the numbers there for you just to look at and it's all in one place. But for the balance sheet, let's focus on these three different things and let's begin. So let's go ahead and start on total assets. Total assets includes your current assets and your non-current assets. Now current assets are assets that are available to you right now or within the next 12 months. Total non-current assets are assets that are not available within the next 12 months or you don't actually, they don't actually plan on making that cash in the future. 
Uh, not always the case, but there's a good chance of that and we'll go over that in a just, just a second. Under current assets, we have our cash and cash equivalents, our receivables, inventory, and other current assets. Now, anytime you see other, just think of it as a wide variety of different things. And in order to find out what those things are, you have to go to the 10K or 10Qs. Don't plan on going into other current assets unless you actually plan on investing in this company. So read through all the different financial statements, such as the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. If you feel comfortable with them at that point, go ahead and dig deeper into the company by going to the 10Ks and 10Qs. All right, and that way you will be able to further understand what you are seeing on the balance sheet. Now, cash and cash equivalents, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you go to cash and cash equivalents a little bit further down, you got your cash. Now, cash is pretty self-explanatory. That's your total cash. You don't have to go to the cheat sheet to figure that one out, but it is on there in case you wanted to know. So right now, Apple has $17.7 billion in cash. That's quite a bit. And we like to see that much cash on hand, especially for a company this large. Uh, very, very important to have a good cash amount on hand. Cash equivalents, these are just assets that they are able to sell off within the next 12 months to turn into cash. And that's good to see as well. We wanna be sure that they have enough uh, available cash in case an emergency comes up, such as what's been going on in the world lately. We don't want them to be blindsided and not be able to afford their uh, current liabilities. And we'll go over that in a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and downsize that. Now we have other short-term investments. These are just investments in the current asset category. It's not on the balance sheet cheat sheet, but you can automatically assume as you are an investor yourself that 52.9 billion of investments, they are able to sell those off probably in the next 12 months. So $52.9 billion gets added into the current asset, which is really good for them. Then you have receivables. Now receivables, you might be a little bit confused with that term. So you go to receivables right here under current asset, okay? And just to read it out to you, are debts owed to a company by its customers for goods and services that have been delivered or used but not yet paid? So basically customers have the goods, they had received the services, but they have not paid yet. So they have that in this category because they are expecting to receive it within the next 12 months. If you break it down even further, you'll see more receivables. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Don't worry too much about it unless you're actually digging deeper. Inventory, I don't have to go to the balance sheet cheat sheet to explain this to you. Everybody knows what inventory is. When you walk into the store, anything that can be sold is inventory. And I like to look at this number and see how much inventory they have. Uh, for example, you see that Apple has a lot of stuff and a lot of money in different places, but their inventory, this is a very low amount. And that to me is saying something. One, I like to see it low, but at the same time, I want to make sure that they are making sales without holdup. So for example, it's like if somebody's trying to get a phone, you don't want them to be waiting a month to get it. They, you want them to be able to get it that same day. So having a good amount of inventory to cover the demand for it is great. Seeing this low shows that they are able to manage the amount of inventory in a way that they produce enough that is demanded, but not excessive amounts that they're just having inventory sit around where they could put that money towards better use. Okay, other current assets, as I said, other, if you wanna look at other, go to the 10K and 10Qs, but don't go there unless you feel comfortable with what you see so far with these different statements up here. You wanna be able to determine that you wanna dig deeper, knowing that you may actually invest in this company. Okay, and that covers the current assets on this balance sheet, but you might see that there's different things that highlighted in maroon. So you have marketable securities, which is equity and debt securities, prepaid expenses. So this is like rent or contracts or, you know, with like marketing agencies and stuff that have been prepaid. And then you have inventory. We already went over that. Okay, so let's go ahead and break down the non-current assets. Now you see here net PPE. If you go to the balance sheet cheat sheet, it's property, plants, and equipment. So we want to know how much property they have. We want to know how much equipment they have. And you can understand why this is not a current asset, okay? So they don't plan on selling their property or their 
equipment or their plants because they want to have that stuff around so that they can produce what it is that they are selling. If they don't have the sufficient amount of property or equipment or plants to make that stuff, they're not gonna be able to produce the product to fulfill the demand. So we wanna see a good amount of property, okay? If you break it down even further, all right, you got all the different land, machinery, leases, and things like that which is pretty good and you want to know that. But then also on top of that, uh, accumulated depreciation, what is that? So just like any asset you buy, say you buy a car from a dealership or you buy a boat, you know, after a while that begins to depreciate in value, okay? Next you have your goodwill and other intangible assets, okay? What is goodwill? So if you go to the balance sheet cheat sheet, basically this line right here is telling us that when a company buys another company and that company has a net fair value right here, net fair value of say $10 billion. Okay. Because Apple would probably spend that much for a company who knows. And instead of paying that $10 billion for that company, they decide we're going to pay $15 billion just so that the person doesn't try and debate or try and negotiate. We just want to get that company right now before somebody else does. So they pay 15 billion. All right. Because they paid 15 billion and that was 5 billion above the 10 billion. That was the net fair value. That 5 billion would be considered goodwill. Now Apple says that they don't have any in goodwill over in 2017 though they do. Let's try and, look into the 10K and 10Q. Don't necessarily just trust it because it's on Yahoo Finance because Yahoo Finance might not have included it for some odd reason. Now, there's a good chance that they did and it just so happens to be nothing, but you just wanna double check just in case. Intangible assets, those are things such as like patents, trademarks, tr copyrights, things that they, you know, they're not gonna sell it because they don't want other people to have them because you know, that's where they make their money. They don't want people to, you know, take their iPhone and completely copy it and then sell it and be their competition because they're selling it for cheaper. So, you know, intangible assets. I like to deduct these things. I don't like to include these things in the asset category. And the reason why is because why would I do that? You know, you can't sell it. Yeah, it's a brand name, that's cool, but you can't sell it. So deduct it from the asset is what I like to do and then do my equations because that gives me a better understanding how well they would be able to do in case, you know, st stuff doesn't start to go well for them. Now, the next one down is in investments and advances. Now, I'm not going to go too much into depth about this. Just know that these are investments as investors on this video. We all know what an investment is. So we just know that they have assets that are long term. They don't plan to sell within the next 12 months. If you want to look further into this, be sure you want to invest in the company before you do so. Don't waste time on companies you don't plan on investing in. And then I'm not going to explain other because I've already gone over other just not too long ago with all the other ones. So that is total non-current assets. And then the sum of these two comes out to 323 billion. Let's go ahead and jump into total liabilities. Now current liabilities. Oh, one last thing with this. I always want to check their current assets to their current liabilities. And the reason why is because current assets is the amount of money that they have readily available within the next 12 months. Whereas current liabilities is the debt that they have to pay within that next 12 months. And if they don't have enough assets to cover this debt, that raises a few red flags because then it's like, what in the world are they doing? Why do they have so many liabilities that are due that they don't even have the money to cover. So pay attention to that. This is well above what I expect for current assets compared to the current liabilities. Now, if you wanna divide and check that ratio out and kind of make your own set of rules about it, you can. Now let's go ahead and break down the current liabilities. Payables and accrued expenses. Okay, what are payables and accrued expenses? Now we can go back to the cheat sheet. Okay, we got our current debt. This is debt due within one year. Uh, then we have our accounts payable and accrued liabilities. Okay, now we can just simply read money owed to creditors and suppliers. All right, that is awesome. Let's go ahead and see how much they have owed to creditors and suppliers. Now, suppliers, this could be like, you know, people who provide their product, provide uh, 
parts for their products and things like that. So Skyworks Solutions, Sears Logic, all those different companies. Okay, so they have $42.2 billion owed to these people. Now you might be wondering, what is current accrued expenses payables are the creditors and suppliers that already have sent apple the bill to their ser for their services accrued expenses if you go back here accrued liabilities invoices and bills that have not yet been received so these creditors and suppliers they are owed money by apple but they have not been yet billed for it so next we have down here the current debt and capital lease obligation now, current debt, you know, everybody has debt, so I'm pretty sure you know what that is. Capital lease obligation, we all know what a lease is. So I'm not gonna go into depth. If you're not gonna find it on the balance sheet cheat sheet, but if you wanna look it up, that is fine as well. Just know that this is debt that they owe within the next 12 months because it falls under the current liabilities and that is how much they owe is 13.7 billion, which is quite a bit. So you wanna figure out what that is if you plan on investing in this company. Right now, we're just doing a quick analysis. Now you have also your current deferred liabilities, okay? This includes current deferred revenues. What is a current deferred revenue? Well, it's right here in deferred revenue, but this is money that the company has received but has not delivered their service or their product. So for example, I have a MacBook Pro. I special ordered it because it has more features than the standard that you would find at the store. Now because I special ordered it, they asked for the money around two weeks in advance. Now, because they have my money and I don't have my product, it is deferred revenue. But once I receive the product, once I receive my MacBook, then this deferred revenue will then move up to the asset category. And then other current liabilities is just miscellaneous. You can go into depth with that with the 10K and 10Qs. All right, so that goes through our liability category. Let's go ahead and downsize that and open up the non-current liabilities. And you're gonna see very similar terminology here. Uh, the reason why is because it's pretty much the same thing, except for this is debt that is not due within the next 12 months, but more further down the line into the future. So if we look at this, they have $98.6 billion of long-term debt. You know, this is probably mortgages and loans on properties and all those other things. I'm not gonna really care too much about that, but that is an excessive amount of debt. But at the same time, you know, I, I could deal with it because, you know, they are a big company. Now, if they were a small company not producing that much money, that would be a little bit concerning. All right, so let's go ahead and move into the next one, which is current deferred liabilities. Now you got non-current deferred taxes. Now, if, you, if you're trying to see what it is, just ho hover over it and it'll pop up, just a heads up. Uh, taxes, uh, deferred revenue. So this is taxes that they probably have set aside because they're not planning on paying taxes for the next 12 months because they're waiting for the next tax season or something like that. Then you have non-current deferred revenue. So this is money that they are deferring. So like my MacBook Pro, but this is longer term. So they have received the money for projects that are in the next, uh, after the next 12 months. So, and if you're not too sure about that, you could come down here and you could see it all in here. So let's go ahead and downsize that now. And then you have your trade and other payables. For some reason, they've, they uh, didn't put the space between trade and and but uh, that's trade and other payables, so don't get confused. So payables, we already know what payables are, so if we went back to payables, money owed to creditors and suppliers. So they owe this money to creditors and suppliers, but it's not due in the next 12 months. And then you got other, and we already talked about other. So that's our total liabilities, and I want you to look at something. If you take your total assets and you subtract your total liabilities, you are left with 65 0.339 billion dollars which is our total equity now total equity what is total equity well that's the remaining amount of asset available to shareholders after all liabilities have been paid and then there's an additional thing i want you to pay attention to which is if you were to go down and break down total uh, stockholders equity you you have here retained earnings which is 14.966 billion dollars now, what is retained earnings? Now, this is income left over for the business after it has paid out dividends to its shareholders. So the dividend money that shareholders receive every uh, biannually, quarterly, that's coming from the shareholder equity. Now, the remaining amount is the retained earnings, which can be 
put back into the company to help it grow. And that is pretty much that. So they have $14.966 billion to put back into the company after they pay out their shareholders. Now, on top of that, we have calculations, okay? And debt to equity ratio is one of them. So basically you're taking your debt and dividing it by your equity. So in this case, we take the total debt of 258 and some change. I'm not gonna put the change just because this is an example and divide it by the equity. Okay, we're left with 3.96. Now let's go back to this little cheat sheet. This is obviously not in the good range, okay? So if it's greater than 2.0, then you wanna be careful. And if it's in between 1.0 and 1.5, that's a good range. Now, if it's less than 1.0, you gotta ask yourself, is the reason this is, is because it has no room to grow or it's already peaked at its growth? You kind of figure that one out. It's not saying it's bad, but it's, at the same time, it's questionable of what's going on. Should you invest in it? Is, it, is your money gonna grow if you put it in there? But at the same time, you don't wanna put in a company that has a lot more debt than they do equity because you know this is how companies get like mortgages and loans and you know money from lenders and things like that. Now with Apple, I'm not too worried about Apple because look, their total assets, I mean, their long-term assets right here is 180 billion, 143 billion for their current assets. They can easily pay off most of their debt with their current assets. And they have plenty of, you know, equity left over either way. So, you know, Apple is one of those kind of exceptions and there's always exceptions to the rule. You just gotta pick and choose your battles. Now, if you're not, if you're not too sure about that one, you can always use the asset divided by debt ratio. Anything less than one, that just means that they have more debt than they do assets. That's not good. You, you wanna have a company that has more assets than they do debt. Um, and if they don't, then you wanna ask why and how long until they are out of there. Now, good is at a one. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. They have equal amount of assets as they do their debts, which means that, you know, there's there's not as much to worry about because at least if they go under, they have some money to distribute back out to their investors. If it is two or greater, that means they have twice as much assets than they do liabilities. Where does Apple fall in this category? Well, we take out our calculator. So we do 323 and some change divided by 258 equals 1.25. So when we look at this, okay, they're in between good and great. Now, that's really good because at least we know that they have more assets than they do debt, and that is a great way to evaluate a balance sheet. Now, you might be thinking, man, Ryan, that took like forever. That was like 20 minutes of explaining things. But in all honesty, once you get used to it, I had to go through and explain every single detail about the balance sheet. But if you know what you're looking for and you don't have to explain it to somebody and go through the, and show the cheat sheet, you know, I could have been through that in five minutes or less. So there you have it. That's a pretty simple way to get through the balance sheets uh, fairly quickly, also with as much detail and grit as possible, but also weeding out as many stocks as possible so that you don't waste too much time on them because there's thousands of companies to look at and possibly invest in. This is a way to find those hidden gems. But once you find that hidden gem, be sure to do a little bit more in-depth research on that balance sheet and all the other statements. Go into the 10K and 10Qs to figure out what exactly it is that they have. And that way you're not blindsided in case something happens after you invested a lot of money into the companies. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment down below. Also, if you haven't already, please consider tapping that like button, turn it blue like a Smurf. And also, if you have not already, please consider subscribing by hitting that ugly mug over to my right. It looks just like this one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.